Dustin King is an investigative journalist and former security consultant, creator and editor-in-chief of the Fifth Column News. His work can be seen on hundreds of websites. His activism began in the late 1990s and continues to this day. While actively supporting human rights initiatives, he is engaged in traditional activism as well as direct action campaigns. Areas of expertise and experience include investigative techniques, public and media relations, personal protection, operational security, and trial preparation. Ladies and gentlemen, Justin King. Thank you. Wow. An introduction like that makes me sound like I know what I'm talking about. Um, okay, what we're going to be talking about today is basically how to craft a press release, only it's not going to be a press release. You're going to be crafting the article, and we're going to teach you how to manipulate and exploit journalists. So... We're going to teach you how to control me. Wow, his Everybody has this image of a journalist. And that's, you know, a guy typically all dressed in khaki, Bobby. carrying his camera, uh -huh. always out in the field, always working, just a hard, very driven individual. The fact is that's 3 to 5% of journalists in the mainstream, maybe 15 to 20% in the alternative media. Those are your busy journalists, okay? All journalists can be divided into two kinds, busy and lazy. You know, you hear a correspondent, journalist, reader, whatever, doesn't matter, busy or lazy. You have to package your product so you can send out one thing and get both of their attentions. And I'm going to kind of work on today. I've read blogs upon blogs upon blogs about how to craft a press release. Most of them were written by people in public relations, not by journalists. Um, you know, they always start off the same way. You know, you want to pique the interest and then you send it to the press line. It's wrong. Don't do that. <laughs> the, the method that every outlet uses to get their press releases, they get hundreds, if not thousands per day. Yours is going to get buried. You don't want to do that. You want to pick a journalist and go after him or her. Um, more importantly, with a lot of what we do, we're, we're small groups. Later today, we have Stuart Rhodes, founder of the Oath Keepers on. If you run another activist group that's uh, veterans and constitutional you know, protection, and there's two press releases there, Bob's you know, group, your group, has 50 people and the Oath Keepers have a million, guess who's going to get the quote that gets used? It's a built-in audience. And like it or not, journalism still has a lot to do with ratings. So they're not... Justin, if you would hold for just a second, we are having audio difficulties. We're going to bring you in another way. If everybody okay. would just hold on a second, we will correct this right away. And Justin, you'll be able to be heard uh, clearer. Just give us a second. Okay, we're going to bring Justin back in. It's going to be audio only so he can continue his presentation. Thank you for your patience. Go ahead, Justin. Okay, so what we were talking about was the fact that using a press release and going about it the normal way is probably going to get you swamped, overtaken by a larger organization. The point is that nobody's going to get your message. So what you're going to do is you're going to contact the journalists directly. You're not going to use a press release line. And to make it even a little bit more effective, Rather than sending them a press release, you're going to write the article for them. You're going to package a product specifically designed so the lazy journalist can simply take it and run it. And the busy journalist, you've given him a good base that he can work from. So we're going to start by telling you how to actually write the article. Because there is obviously, uh, nobody wants to go to journalism school to write press releases, so there's probably not a lot of people that know exactly how to fill this out. But it's not that difficult. You're going to start off by remembering that it's not a press release anymore. You're actually writing the article, so you have to keep a neutral voice during the body in the main part of your article means you're going to have to at least pretend to be objective about it. Now, your first paragraph is called a deck. That's going to be 
four sentences, it's going to answer the, the five W's. Who, what, when, where, and why. Who did it? Where did they do it? When they do it? Why they do it? What happened? That simple. And there, the body of the paragraph or the body of the article is going to have two or three sentences about each one of those questions. Okay? You're also going to include photographs, one to three, with a lot of what we do to protest. When you're sending in these photographs, remember, you can't have too much file language in it. You know, there's always a lot of signs in, in at protests that aren't G-rated. Those won't get ran, so you want to eliminate those. You also want to go ahead and include some extra links to additional information. So the busy journalist has stuff to click on and knows exactly where he's going to go. Um, the, from there, you're going to go ahead and uh, use the um, <clears throat> My notes were on my phone, <laughs> so I've got to do this from memory right now. Uh, oh, your quotes. You're going to pull from quotes from your uh, or somebody inside your organization. These are the ones that you can actually insert your message into because the quotes, number one, they're not going to be changed. You know that. And two, you're, you're going to have – you don't have to be objective the quotes because this is somebody inside the organization. So this is the part where you can say, yes, my organization is the greatest. This is what we do and this is how we do it. Your body of the article should not be like that. The, now what you're going to do is you're going to take this and you're going to send it specifically to journalists that have covered your stuff previously or covered events like yours previously. You're going to have to do your homework but this will give you a better result than just sending it blind to a press release email or to a fax machine. Now, the next question you have is when do you send it? Do you send it before the event? Do you send it after the event? If there's any chance the event could fail, you send it afterwards. We've all been there where, you know, the Facebook event page has 100 people signed up for it. You get to the event and there's six people there. If you go out of your way and get a journalist to show up there and there's only six people there, the coverage that you're going to get is not coverage you want. Because then the story is, there's this cause, but nobody cares. The other side of this coin is that you will never get that journalist to show up to something again. So you want to make sure that the message that's going out is the one you want. You need to control the flow of information. Everything is always a success. So if there's a chance that it couldn't be, that it might, you know, flop, send it out afterward just to be on the safe side. It's better to build the brand with we did this and have people show up to the next one than have a journalist show up and throw out a story that basically says they tried to do this and failed. We as access can never fail. We have to can always succeed. So, how do you contact the journalist? Social media. There, there's tons of them out there. And they're mostly pretty available. Now, I don't know which groups are represented here today, um, but I can run through a list of journalists for different causes that are pretty common. And you can base off of those, you can kind of guess who you need to talk to because these are people I know they're the busy kind, but I know that they'd be interested in these topics. Um, a good example would be Bobby Rodrigo, who's the guy who just saved the day and fixed the communications, I think. If it has to do with consti the Constitution in any way, shape, or form, you contact him. That's his niche. Police brutality, you have Cassandra Fairbanks, Virgo Vaduva, Cassius Methel, these guys. Those are anti-media, truth voice, and I don't know where Cassandra works. But they will jump at the chance to 
cover your story. If it's GMOs, you go to Nick Burnaby at Anti-Media or Jennifer Long at the Fifth Column. These are people that that's what they do. So you, you want to target your press release and find the right people. And you want to do as much of the work for these guys as you can because it guarantees that they're going to finish it out. Because you're a lazy journalist that just gets this and happens to look at it. It's just going to be like, okay, well, I can run this. It's good enough. Your busy journal journalist will expand on it. The last bit that you need to remember about this is the word count. Your entire article should be 250 to 450 words. That gives, if you're going with a mainstream hour like an actual newspaper, word count's important. On the internet, not so much because it doesn't cost any more. Um, so you want to hit in that range because your lazy journalist is probably only going to have a 500 word count space given to him from his editor. And, you know, you're a busy journalist will have more because he has more going on. And he, the editor trusts him a little bit more, but he can expand on it, and that's what the links are for. The other thing that you need to remember is that on your press release, on your article, to include the phrase, release into the public domain, make sure you have the rights to the images. This tells the lazy journalist it is completely okay to copy and paste this. And that's what you want them to do, because then it's completely your message that's getting out. It's, you have complete control over the information. And that's really the main goal. Now, I have no idea where we're at on time. Bobby? Well, uh, Justin, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Fantastic. Uh, we're, uh, we're doing fine. Um, I got a couple of questions for you, uh, please. Sure, sure. Um, expanding on your conversation on the press release, can you give us a checklist of the things you look at when you're writing or getting ready to publish your articles or press releases? Headline. It needs to be short, sweet, and actually explain what the article is about. Uh, a lot of times we see stuff that has to do with, you know, where people say, you know, a fight in Denver or an environmental fight in Denver or whatever doesn't tell anybody anything, doesn't get them to read the article. you got to be real specific in that headline. That's one of the biggest mistakes I see. Um, other than that, proofread it, have somebody else proofread it, make sure there are no mistakes because if there's a lot of grammar mistakes, it makes you look bad. <laughs> uh, these guys don't know what they're talking about because they use the wrong there, you know? Um, those are the main ones, and you don't want it to be too long. The sweet spot on the Internet is between 300 and 700 words. That's what's going to go viral. So you, you don't want to pack too much information into it, as horrible as that sounds. You, you, you want to focus on something that's easily digestible, because you're trying to get it to spread. Those people that want to check it out and get more information, they'll find you. And I think that's, those are the main things that we really harp on and really look at. What else do we have? How do you find the stories that really catch people's attentions? How do we find the stories that catch people's, catch people's, attention? Um, catch people's attention? Yes. Okay. Most of us spend all day with a phone, tablet, laptop, whatever in our hands. <laughs> we tend to look at breaking news articles, and then we, late night, we troll Reddit and places like that. And we just scour and scour and scour, and then every once in a while, we get tips from you guys. And those are the ones that really grab interest because it's a story that the alternative media is breaking. And those are the ones that tend to blow up the biggest. Um, so don't ever feel like you're harassing anybody or anything like that. Every alternative journalist out there wants to hear from you. 
and want you to say, hey, what do you think about covering this? They may not have the time to do it, but, but they want to know about it. Um, one of the, if you're looking to get into this, one of the best apps, I would say, get for your phone, is called News Republic. And it's a, a feed of probably 200 different news outlets, mainstream news outlets. The reporting is horrible, but it lets you know the events that are going on. <laughs> and from there, you can do your own research and get involved. Yeah, it's always a problem sorting through the the cesspool of information that we do. That's for sure, Justin. Uh, how can someone, what do you consider the best way for someone to get an article that they've written widely shared? <laughs> I, I wish there was a, uh, a formula for that. Um, your headline and the image that you put together matter more than you could possibly imagine. Um, we, we've actually played around and experimented and ran the same article with two different headlines. And you're talking about differences in shares of like tens of thousands. Um, it's something that we've been doing at, with anti-media and the fifth column. Um, so what you want is you want something that's going to grab the internet reader's attention. Somebody that's on the internet all the time, they've seen it all. So you have to give them an image that's new. Stock photography isn't going to cut it unless it's very dramatic. Um, and then the headline really needs to be informative, but I let them know what the article is going to be about, but it can't give away everything. You know, you can't say uh, Congress de decides to ban drone flights over the city. I have no reason to read that article. I, I know what happened. Debate over drone flights heats up. It, it, it engages the reader and brings them into the article, which is what you want. And the share buttons should be in the article as well. So that those are going to be the two biggest things. Are the things what gets shared has to do with what's seen on Facebook. It really doesn't have a whole lot to do with the writing style or anything like that, other than if it's bad content, it's not going to get shared. So, Sure. The question from Mike Shipley in our chat room, can you offer any advice as far as piercing the sort of mainstream veil where a message of liberty sounds, quote, too different, end quote, and is therefore dismissed? Yeah. That I can do. <laughs> oh, yeah. You have to approach it from whatever your topic is. You have to approach it from the stance of the mainstream media and then take one or two steps off. Okay? If you're, if you're trying to be that, that bridge between somebody that's just starting to wake up and the rest of the movement, you, you know, nobody starts off Militant. Nobody starts off completely awake. You're drowsy, you know, and, and you need to kind of just ease them into it. <laughs> you know, you don't start off by saying we, uh, you know, we created ISIS to uh, main, to make sure that the Iraqis had an enemy so our troops could stay there and that we could maintain a presence in the Middle East. That sounds crazy. It's true, but it sounds crazy. <laughs> to somebody that hasn't woken up yet. So you started off with, you know, it seems like we accidentally created ISIS. And you still leave them that benefit of the doubt that everything's okay in the world. Once they start reading, and then your links that you hyperlink your sources, they get to those, and, it, and then they start down the rabbit hole. And then the next thing you know, they're, you know, they have a guy fox mask on and they're throwing a brick at somebody. So. Fantastic. And finally, what's the worst flaw? And you've talked about some of these, but what do you consider the worst flaw someone can have in their article? Uh, in 
accurate information. And that sounds <laughs> sounds simple, right? But it can be something as simple as um, I'll give you one that I did recently. Uh, I listed the Secretary of State as Hillary Clinton, even though she's gone. Something like that casts so much doubt on everything else that's in the article. So make sure you fact check everything. Anything that's even remotely controversial, put a link in there so people can confirm it and make it real easy for them to just click, oh, that is true. Because that is probably the most damaging thing. I mean, that's even worse than it being poorly written. If it's poorly written and all the facts are there, that's one thing. You know, and people can overlook it being poorly written. They won't overlook bad information. So as, as boring as it is, the fact-checking is critical. There are hundreds of outlets out there that have gone under because of two or three articles that were just really, really wrong as far as factual information. So that, that would be, <laughs> when you're writing your press release, you're writing an article, whatever it is, you make sure that everything in there is true and verifiable. So. I appreciate you giving us that great insight. Thank you for participating in ActCon 2 and everybody. This is Justin King, editor-in-chief of the Fifth Column News, fifthcolumnnews.com. See him virtually every day. He works very hard. I can tell you that personally. Thank you, Justin, for being part of this conference. Look forward to uh, working with you in the future. Thank you.